last class of this topic we saw the test equipment and we have also seen how the data is presented and how it is interpreted okay, in order to know the presence of active defects. So, here also as you would have realized by now uh, the indications are indirect, okay. you have to interpret the results. Okay. So, as I said before whenever uh, the results are uh, subjected to interpretation and whenever they are indirect you need to uh, calibrate the system before you can use it. So, in this case also uh, we need to do that. So, let us uh, see in this class today uh, how the calibration is done and then we will see uh, some other aspects and today we are going to uh, finish this particular chapter. So, as uh, you would have seen before uh, in order to calibrate a system uh, you need to have uh, some reference uh, which could uh, generate a signal which can be used uh, as a defect signal and calibrate the instrument. Okay. So, in this case also you need to simulate acoustic waves uh, which come out from defects. Okay. So, you have to use a pulse generator which can uh, simulate acoustic emission which uh, comes out from actual emission events. Okay. So, you can use uh, simulated waves generated by a pulse generator. But the main difficulty in this is uh, to simulate actual event it is not so easy okay? because the actual events uh, happen due to some kind of damage and moving defects and they generate this acoustic uh, emission uh, signals with particular frequencies and particular energy levels. And if you want to simulate that it is very difficult to match uh, the parameters of the signals which are coming out from actual defects. Okay? So, that is the uh, difficulty that is the challenge that one would face in this case when you try and calibrate the system by uh, simulated waves uh, through a pulse generator. Okay. It can still be done, but uh, there will be uh, these concerns and limitations. Okay. So, in order to uh, overcome this limitation uh, these two uh, persons came up uh, with a method. or uh, came up with a source uh, which is very close to an actual acoustic emission source. Okay. So, this source or this method is named after the inventors Su and Nielsen. So, this is known as a Su Nielsen method or Su Nielsen source to calibrate acoustic emission system. Okay, so, let us talk about uh, this method. This is a uh, very uh, simple method, but still quite effective. You do not really uh, need uh, you know uh, high end instrument or expensive pulse generator and uh, things like that. What you uh, need? Uh, you need something which can generate uh, this acoustic emission events like what you get uh, from damages or defects uh, inside a component. Okay. So, instead of using a pulse generator why not uh, use some uh, damage phenomena itself that was the idea behind this particular method. Okay. So, that you would be able to generate uh, waves which are uh, very close to actual acoustic emission waves. So, what is done in this case all you need uh, is a 2 H pencil. and you simply have to break it. Okay. You have to simply break the lead of the pencil and due to that fracture event okay, you could uh, generate lot of uh, acoustic emission. So, as I told it will be like a phenomena like a damage uh, phenomena which is uh, similar to uh, the damage and defects that you can expect inside components. Okay. So, you take this uh, pencil and then extend the lead up to about 3 mm to 0.5 mm or 3 mm 
and this uh, pencil lead is the size of the lead is 0.3 mm. So, then you uh, take it uh, on a surface or you can take it on the surface of the uh, component uh, being examined that itself can be used to break it. Okay. But you have to break it at a particular angle which is uh, 30 degree. Okay. So, you take the pencil at that particular angle. and break this lead by applying some pressure. So, when the lead is broken, suddenly it will release lot of stresses and that will be released onto the surface which will generate lot of uh, vibrations in the atoms at the surface and that is how this uh, acoustic emission uh, will be created. And since it is coming out uh, from a fracture phenomena, uh, this will be very close to uh, actual acoustic emission events happening inside a component uh, due to a damage. Okay. So, this is how they came up with this method uh, which is a very uh, simple yet very effective to simulate and calibrate uh, acoustic emission systems. So, then uh, you can place the sensor close to this. and collect this acoustic emission waves which are generated due to the fracture of this lead and these waves now can be used uh, to calibrate the system. Okay. Now, the other important aspect uh, about uh, acoustic emission testing or for that matter uh, for any other entity testing is uh, to filter out the noise okay. because we have seen in this case uh, especially that uh, there could be lot of noise. In fact, anything below that threshold which is defined is considered as noise. Okay. And if you have a very large amount of noise in the signal, uh, then uh, it can create lot of confusion during the testing. Okay. So, it is necessary to first identify the noise and then filter it out before you project the data onto the display system for interpretation. Okay. So, that is the uh, next thing that we are going to talk about as to how to filter out the noise uh, from an acoustic emission signal. So, there are uh, different methods uh, by which uh, you can do it, but uh, you need to use a particular parameter uh, which is closely related to the noise or to the quality of the signal. And using that particular parameter, uh, you can first identify the noise and then uh, using the instrument and uh, the electronics that you have, you could filter out the noise. Okay. So, if you remember I told you uh, this parameter duration is a parameter which can be used uh, to filter out noise because this is uh, closely related to uh, the quality of the signal, uh, meaning uh, the duration of uh, acoustic emission signals coming out from different sources will be different. Okay. So, since uh, it qualifies the signal in that manner, this particular parameter can be used to identify the noise. Okay. That means, if it is not matching with uh, acoustic emission signal uh, which are supposed to come from active uh, defects, then uh, you could say that. Uh, that particular signal which is not matching the duration of actual acoustic emissions is uh, some noise which is coming out uh, some from some other sources which are no way related to the sample and the defect inside it. Okay. So, true heat duration or the duration of actual true acoustic emission signal is in this range. It is in the range of uh, 30 microsecond to 2 millisecond. Okay. So, as I said if you see a signal with uh, other uh, values of duration which is not in this range, then 
it would be it can be identified as a noise. Okay. So, that is how this particular parameter as I said before uh, can be useful to uh, filter out the noise, but it has to be done uh, in a particular manner uh, through some controlled uh, experiments and that is what we are going to see now. So, you first uh, collect the hits or the emission signals and then uh, plot them as a function of the amplitude. So, this will be uh, the data will be in terms of the duration as I said that is the parameter that we are going to use and you plot it as a function of the amplitude. Okay. So, if you uh, keep getting uh, acoustic emission signals uh, from a particular source, so that uh, signal will increase uh, over time uh, in size and in uh, strength. So, if you uh, consider the signals you will find them coming like this which will be very distinct and strong indications and this will be all above the threshold. So, if the threshold is defined here. So, the actual acoustic emission signals will be first of all above the threshold and they will have enough amplitude and they will be uh, very strong uh, which can be easily identified. Okay. So, if you keep plotting the duration as a function of uh, the amplitude, you will see this will lie uh, along a band like this. all the emission signals which are uh, coming out from actual emission events will lie along this band. You uh, might be uh, also observing uh, some uh, discrete uh, signals coming here and there. For example, you could have uh, something above the band like that or you may also see something which is below the band okay, like this. Okay. So, uh, since these are not uh, falling uh, within this particular band, this itself is indicative enough that uh, although uh, these are being picked up by the sensor, these are not really coming out from actual acoustic emission events uh, related to defect and damage in a component. Okay. So, you should have some idea about what could be those other non relevant sources of uh, emissions which may look like uh, actual acoustic emission events and will be picked up by the sensor. Okay. So, the non relevant uh, signals can come from sources like uh, electromagnetic interference. So, if you talk about the sources of the noise. It can come from uh, electromagnetic interference sliding or rubbing of metal surfaces Then uh, you could have uh, emissions uh, coming out from uh, leakage or uh, some radio interference. So, it could be uh, electromagnetic interference or radio interference and this kind of uh, signals will typically have a larger duration uh, compared to uh, the duration of uh, an acoustic emission signal coming out from defects. Okay.
So, this all will have uh, typically larger duration and that is how based upon this parameter you could identify noise like what you see here they do not fall into this band. So, if you see uh, this kind of uh, uh, signals which are uh, above the main band, this could uh, come from uh, friction or leaks So, these have more threshold crossing as you could see because they are above this band and then you can have this kind of signals uh, which have less uh, threshold crossing and uh, this may come for example, uh, from an electromagnetic interference. which will have uh, less threshold crossing and a different duration compared to actual acoustic signals. Okay, so, like this with the help of uh, this particular parameter duration and with the help of this kind of plot you can identify the noise uh, which are there in the signal and then with the help of the electronics in the instrument uh, you can uh, filter out this noise and finally, characterize the actual data and display it. Okay. So, this is an important aspect uh, of uh, this technique to filter out the noise first. And finally, we will talk about uh, one more aspect of this technique which is about uh, source location. This technique is primarily uh, qualitative, uh, it does not give you any uh, quantitative information as to uh, where the source is uh, located or where exactly uh, the location of the source, how big is the source and so on. However, uh, you would be able to get some idea at least about uh, the zone from which uh, these emissions are coming out. Okay. So, that uh, you know you could take uh, corrective measures around that particular area uh, where you see that lot of emission events are coming out. Okay. So, in order to do that uh, you need to uh, use this uh, method which is known as source location scheme. So, you can place the sensors at particular locations on the component or on the structure and then you uh, collect the signals from them and uh, based on uh, at what time the signals are uh, being received by different sensors, you will be uh, you will be able to get an idea about the location. For example, if you have a linear kind of uh, uh, structure, you could simply put uh, two sensors at a particular distance from each other, sensor 1 and sensor 2 and let us say these are placed at a distance of L from each other. So, let us say if you have a source uh, uh, somewhere here, okay, you will be able to receive the signal uh, first by the sensor which is closer to it. Okay. So, you will uh, receive this uh, signal by this sensor at time t 1 and by this sensor it will receive uh, by time t 2. So, if the source is closer to uh, sensor 1, then uh, t 1 would be less than t 2. Okay. And if you have an idea about uh, the velocity of sound waves, because end of the day uh, these waves which are generated are uh, sound waves. So, if you know the velocity of these uh, waves uh, inside inside the sample material, let us say the velocity is v, then you will get an idea as to how far is this uh, defect from this center line 
let us say if that distance is x. So, you will get to know about x if you know the velocity because we know that uh, velocity into time is distance and time we have already calculated. So, if you take the difference between t 1 and t 2, so if you take the delta t and if you multiply this by the velocity, then uh, you will know this distance x from the center line. Okay. So, this is how you will get an idea about the zone or the location from uh, where this acoustic emission uh, signals are coming out with respect to uh, this center line. Okay. So, this is uh, if you uh, have a linear system. So, this is uh, a linear location technique, but you might have some complex uh, geometry or you know uh, the structure could be complex which may not be exactly linear. So, in those cases uh, this kind of a linear location technique cannot be used. So, if you have other complex kind of component or structure to be inspected and if you want to get some idea about the location of the sources, then you have to use the zonal location scheme. So, in the zonal location technique, you have more than two sensors which are placed at different locations on the structure which is being uh, examined. And in this case uh, the placement of the sensors uh, is critical because where you place the sensor at that particular location, you should have a potential uh, source of acoustic emission around it. And also in order to uh, get an idea about the location or the zone of the source, the sensors should be placed in a particular pattern. Or in some geometric shape so that you know uh, how exactly the sensors are placed and what is the distance between them and so on. Okay. For example, three sensors can be placed in a triangular fashion. Let us say these are the three sensors A, B and C which are placed in these three locations. Okay. So, like that you should place them in a particular pattern or in a particular shape so that you know how exactly they are placed and as I said you know what is the distance between them so on. So, that you can identify uh, the locations of the acoustic emission source around them. Once you do that then uh, based upon uh, the time at which the sensors are receiving the uh, signal, you can get an idea that within this triangle for example, where could be uh, the location of the source whether it is close to the A, close to B or close to C. Okay. Let us say for example, uh, if you uh, If, if the time uh, the signal takes to reach uh, sensor A is T 1, uh, 
and it is T 2 and T 3 for sensor B and C. Then uh, if T 1 is equal to T 2 and T 3, okay, then you know that uh, the source is right at the center of this triangle because all the three sensors are receiving the signal at the same time. Okay. On the other hand, if uh, this times are not equal to each other, then you know that uh, the source is not located at the center and depending on whether sensor A, sensor B or sensor C is receiving the signal first, you can say that whether the source is located close to sensor A, close to sensor B or close to sensor C. Okay. For example, if sensor A receives the signal first, then T1 will be less than T2 and T3 and then you can say that uh, this acoustic emission source is possibly close to uh, closer to uh, sensor A compared to sensor B and sensor C. Okay. So, this is how when you uh, place a number of sensors around particular locations, this will give you an idea based upon these different times that these sensors receives uh, the signal at and that is how the zonal location technique will indicate. Uh, the zone or the location from where the acoustic emission signals are coming out. So, this is how uh, you will be able to get, uh, you will be able to uh, know at least the zones from where these acoustic uh, emissions are uh, coming out and uh, accordingly you should uh, target those areas uh, while inspecting and taking corrective measures. Okay. Yeah, so, with this uh, we come to the end of uh, this particular topic. So, let us take a moment uh, to uh, summarize before we close up. So, first uh, we learned about uh, the sources of uh, acoustic emissions and then we saw it is due to uh, a stress field or uh, moving defects which uh, generate uh, some kind of elastic wave uh, inside the material. And uh, that is how these uh, emission waves are generated. Okay. And then we talked about uh, the sources with respect to different uh, kind of uh, material and systems like in metals, composites and concrete. And we had picked up couple of examples, one was in metal, another was about uh, a propagating crack and then we saw how uh, this kind of phenomena uh, can give rise to acoustic emission and what are those parameters which control uh, the emission levels for a particular uh, phenomena. Okay. So, we had seen that for two cases, one was for a propagating crack and another was uh, for phase transformation in a metallic system. Then we uh, talked about signal types, in which case we saw there are two types, one is continuous and another is burst type and then we saw the signal parameters and also learned about how these parameters are used for doing acoustic emission testing. Then we talked about these two effects, Kaiser felicity effect uh, which uh, describe the relationship uh, between the loading history and the acoustic emission events.
and then finally, we saw how the data is uh, displayed in different forms. We also learned about the calibration. that uh, Sue Nielsen method. And finally, we also uh, learn about this uh, source location schemes, which can give you some idea about uh, the location of the source. If not the exact uh, uh, location, at least it can indicate uh, from which zone these emissions are coming out. So, we have learned about that also. And with this, uh, we uh, close this chapter. So, that means in the next lecture, I am going to come up uh, with uh, yet another uh, new topic. So, I am going to stop here today. I will uh, see you next time with that new topic. Till then, bye bye and take care.